Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining this presentation today. Um, my name is Stacey Miller. I'm CCAN's Digital Campaigns Coordinator, and today we're going to talk about um, some basic Zoom tips, how to use Zoom uh, if you're a climate activist. I know uh, the coronavirus has brought a lot of challenges um, for all of us, including how we organize, and so this is a basic 101 Zoom training on how to set up a Zoom and how to use it um, so we can continue to stay engaged on climate activism um, during this digital age. I know a lot of these tech tools are new for a lot of people. So if you're new to Zoom or um, if you're a beginner of Zoom, I'm gonna go into some basic 101 tips and then we're gonna move into some more advanced tips uh, in case you might be hosting some Zoom meetings um, to sort of level up and up your game on these digital tools. So again, my name is Stacy Miller. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y, at chesspeakclimate.org, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, so let's jump right in. Okay, so some basics um, in terms of Zoom. I would recommend you create an account. You can create a free account. Um, so go to the Zoom website uh, in a web browser and download that. Um, I would recommend downloading the software um, onto your computer. Um, you may already have it downloaded if you've joined a Zoom meeting before. Um, most if you're attending uh, a Zoom meeting as a participant, most hosts are going to recommend that you are using the downloaded version. Sometimes you can access a Zoom meeting via a web browser um, in a link, uh, in a link on a web browser, but I would recommend in order to get the full functionality, um, you download Zoom onto your computer or your desk or your tablet or your smartphone. And we're gonna go into that in a second. Um, so you can uh, download Zoom for free. That would be a basic account. So what are some features of a basic account? Um, you uh, have a 40 minute time limit for three or more people if you're in a Zoom meeting with two other people, um, but there is no time limit uh, for a one-to-one -one video. So if you wanna use Zoom to contact your friends, um, stay in touch, do interviews with people, um, having a free account, actually, you can do a lot, um, and you can use your free account to uh, log in to other meetings that are not hosted by you. Um, so you get all of those tools for free. Um, but if you want to upgrade to a paid account, a paid account uh, beginning starts at about $19.99 per month. Um, you get some more tools, like you're able to record video, um, you can record it to your computer or you can also record it to the cloud. That's a perk that you get for purchasing a paid account. Um, it's good for larger calls to have a paid account. If you yourself are gonna be hosting uh, calls with a lot of people, you might wanna look into a paid account, so that's up to you. But you can actually get all of the tools that you need as part of a free account. <laughs> okay, so like I said, you can download Zoom on multiple devices, so your computer, your phone, your tablet. Um, you can download the Zoom app to all of those. Um, check your app store for what device you're using, um, and you can download that for free. You can be signed in to a Zoom account on one computer, one tablet, and one phone at a time. Um, if you sign into an additional device while logged into another device of that same type, you will be logged out automatically. So make sure you remember your Zoom password. So in case you get signed out, you can sign back in uh, and join a meeting. Okay, next tip I would say is make sure you're running the latest version of Zoom. So Zoom will give you a pop-up notification when there's a new version of Zoom to download that you need to update. Um, I would recommend or, or you can manually download the latest version um, by clicking on one of these links and I'll paste those um, in the description of this video. Um, you can, I mean, the, the, the reason why I recommend making sure you're running the latest version of Zoom is because new features like safety and security features can get rolled out 
um, in the latest updates. So you always want to make sure you're keeping your computer, your devices safe and secure. That's why I say download the latest update. Okay, so we're going to talk about some basic tips. If you're new to Zoom, we're going to go into how to uh, join via audio, join via video, and also merge your audio. So this is an important tip. So you can always test your audio and video before joining a meeting. I would recommend that. Um, but the way you would join um, your audio or video by phone or by computer, um, just make sure it's for your audio. Um, make sure to merge your audio if you're joining a video call, um, but you want to dial in with your phone. A reason why people might want to dial in with their phone in addition to uh, doing video on their computer is uh, audio quality. So I'm actually called in to this recording uh, with my phone. And the reason I'm doing that is because sometimes my internet at my house can be a little spotty. So the reason I'll call in via phone is because I think the audio quality will be a little bit crisper because I'm using uh, my data plan not connected to Wi-Fi. Um, and this, I believe, is stronger than my internet connection. So if my uh, video gets a little shaky, it means, or, you know, pauses or buffers, uh, that means my internet connection isn't as strong. But the reason I joined uh, audio via my phone is so that the audio can stay crisp and clear and won't have, hopefully won't run into as many uh, quality issues. So um that's a choice you know that's up to you for most people if your internet connection is strong it's fine to join with computer audio um okay so the way you would do that is um your toolbar is always going to be at the bottom of your screen i'm presenting today hopefully you can see my toolbar but for me my toolbar is at the top of my screen because i'm in present mode but the way you would join audio is over here on the far left you would go ahead and if you're not already joined by audio it would hit join audio but you can also test your speaker and microphone and audio settings here in your tools and then this will pop up this dialogue which you can either join with computer audio or join by a phone call and if you hit phone call then it'll show you a window that looks like this you'll type in the number on your phone enter the meeting id um if there's a password the password will also be there in the information that you need and then what's really important is to enter your participant id and hit pound you're going to end sorry just for clarity you're going to enter your meeting id hit pound then the audio voice will prompt you to also enter your participant id so you'll go ahead and do that and hit pound um, and that should hopefully join your audio and your video. Okay, so a tip I would give everyone is uh, make sure you mute your audio when you when you're joining a meeting if you're not speaking to cut down on background noise. Um, and then don't forget to unmute yourself when it's your turn to talk if you're joining a meeting with others. I think in general, you know, we've all been on Zoom calls where there's a lot of feedback noise going on. Some people have a lot of noise going on in their house. Totally understandable. You know, this is how we live. This is how we organize. But um, I personally like to stay on mute so that, you know, my coughing, my sneezing, my getting a drink of water is not going to be in the background noise. Um, so that's up to you. If you want to be on video, you can be on video. If for some privacy you want to turn your video off, that's okay too. These are all settings that are up to you and how you want to participate. Okay, so that was the basics on audio and video. Again, if you have any questions for me or need help, I'm going to put my email in the description and I'm going to give it to you at the end of this presentation. So that was basic audio and video. Now let's move into some more advanced tools like sharing your screen. So if you're in a meeting with friends, other climate activists, and you're doing PowerPoints and, you're, and you want to share your screen, uh, your toolbar again is at the bottom of your screen. For me, it's at the top, but it's going to look a little bit like this. Um, these are all your tools at the bottom of your screen. 
in the center should be a little green button that says share screen. So you're gonna go ahead and hit share screen. It'll pop up a window that looks like this. It'll show you all of the different windows you have open, all of your different applications or tabs. Um, so make sure if you're using a web browser that you navigate to the right tab first. Um, so then you can go ahead and click on whichever screen is right. Like if this is my PowerPoint, I would select this. I would select screen one, and then I'd go ahead and hit share. And then it's gonna show your screen to the rest of the people that you're on the call with. Okay, that was basic how to share your screen. Um, now we're gonna talk about how all of the different ways that you can participate in a meeting. So. There are a lot of different tools available to you. Again, all of your tools are gonna to be at the bottom uh, in the toolbar. So besides these basic audio and video tools, um, you can see who else is on the call by hitting uh, participants. Again, you can share your screen. Um, sometimes you'll also have an annotate feature if your uh, meeting host is allowing you guys to do like a whiteboard situation, but you can also click on more, which will give you more tools. So if you want to access the chat, you can hit chat. Also, if you're on a PC, you have some screen, uh, some keyboard shortcuts. So that'd be Alt H. If you want to invite someone to this meeting, you can click on that. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it in terms of the basic tools about how you participate in a meeting. So again, um, your audio and video tools are always gonna be in your toolbar at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. So if you're muted and you're trying to unmute yourself, it's almost gonna be at the bottom left of your screen. Okay, there are other ways you can participate in a meeting um, depending on the settings that your meeting host has set up. They can enable this or disable this. So sometimes you won't always have this ability, um, but other ways you can participate in a meeting is with some nonverbal feedback. So you have the ability to raise your hand if you wanna ask a question. That would be um, like for something CCAN does a lot is if we're doing a larger webinar style event, we'll have all of our participants muted um, and you hopefully will be able to stay muted and you won't be able to unmute yourself until we call on you. So. That's where the raise hand feature comes in. Maybe halfway through the meeting when it's time for a question and answer section, we'll say, we as CCAN organizers will say, okay, if you wanna talk, if you wanna participate in this meeting now, if you have something to say, or you wanna ask a question to one of our organizers, go ahead and hit raise hand. So that will enter yourself in a question queue, and then we can go ahead and unmute you from there. Um, so other nonverbal feedback, and this, these tools will show on the right-hand side of your screen if you go to the chat. Um, and the way you would access that is on your tools, all the way on the right should be the option for chat. Okay, and then, another, but you do have the ability to hit more in the chat and you can give a thumbs up, a thumbs down. This icon is a little clap. You can give a little clap if someone finishes their presentation. Um, the coffee button means you need a break. So if you're gonna step away from your screen for a second, um, and the time button just means uh, you're asking for more time. Yeah, so these are all uh, nonverbal ways you can communicate to your meeting host while your meeting is happening. Okay. All right, so this is just a basic text explainer of what we just went over. If you're muted in a meeting, you can still let the host know your thoughts uh, with those emoji reactions. So you can send a thumbs up or a clapping emoji to communicate without interrupting the meeting. Um, right, so if you wanna react during the meeting, there should be a reactions tab at the bottom in the toolbar in the same panel where you mute audio and video, but just off to the right. And you can choose the emoji that you want. Um, yeah, and everyone can see everyone's feedback in the meeting. Okay, so let's basic troubleshoot um, any problems you might be having with Zoom. So let's talk about video. If your video is not working, if you're called into a call 
and your other participants or you notice uh, say, hey, your video is not working. Do you want to turn your video on? Um, if you're on a PC, um, some troubleshooting tips for Windows. Just make sure that um, your camera is on. Make sure your settings allow Zoom to access your camera. And the way you would do that is just by going to the settings on your computer in your start um, task manager. Just search for settings and check your video settings but also some other tips make sure that all other programs that utilize the camera are not using the camera or are closed so if you have other video recording apps um, open on your computer maybe try closing those and that might fix the issue um, you can also try uh, hanging up from the call rest restarting your computer and seeing if that will fix your video issues but as a last resort what you can do is uninstall zoom and then re reinstall the latest version of Zoom. So that's if you have a PC. If you have a Mac, um, make sure all of their programs that use the camera, like Photo Booth and FaceTime, are closed. You can also try restarting your computer. Um, if the camera is still not working on Zoom, then maybe try some other apps that uh, do use a camera, like your front-facing camera. Um, I, again, if as a last resort, you could uninstall Zoom and reinstall the latest version. Um, you can also check your settings permissions and make sure that Zoom has access to your camera. Okay, so let's talk about some troubleshooting tips. If your audio is not working, um, if you can't hear the other people in a Zoom meeting. Um, so first, make sure your volume is up. Make sure your speaker is turned on, like you're not on mute. Um, increase the volume on your mobile device. Um, if you're using your phone, try plugging in earphones to your phone or to your computer. Um, also try hanging up and calling back in again. Also don't forget that uh, to check the toolbar at the bottom of your Zoom window and make sure you're actually called into the meeting. So check it might say join audio. That means you haven't joined audio uh, from your computer yet, which is totally fine to do. Again, um, you don't have to call in using your phone if you're using a computer. Um, you can use computer audio, which will just be uh, the way you'll hear is speakers on your computer and the way you input is the microphone that's in your computer. Um, try restarting your device. And again, as a last resort, try reinstalling Zoom. Hopefully it won't get to that point. Um, just check all of your settings and hopefully you can get your audio working, no problem. Okay, so another troubleshooting tip. If you've been on a Zoom call before, you probably know what I'm talking about. Is when um, you hear like an echo, like a ringing noise, like something that's sometimes it's very high pitched ringing. And why that happens is because there's an echo happening. Um, so what that means is it probably means that there's uh, someone's device out there is channeling your audio feedback and that creates that ringing noise. Um, so why that might be happening is someone has called in with their audio um, thinking that they're not using computer audio but they signed, they called into the meeting with video also not realizing they were connected via audio from their computer so then the sound is coming from two different places and the microphone is picking up what the phone is hearing so the sound is coming from two different places on one microphone and that creates that ringing noise so how do you fight this audio echo um telling other people on the call that you're on to mute themselves until they can figure out where their audio issue is coming from and try merging their audio and their video. Um, if you are the host of a meeting or the host, even if you're not the host, can mute uh, the attendee while they figure out their audio issue. Um, yeah, and again, asking that person to mute themselves, you might be able to figure out who the echo is coming from. So just tell that person to mute themselves for the time being, maybe call back in. So yeah, so, but, Echo can also sometimes come from um, someone's computer or phone audio being too loud. Um, 
It could mean someone's having a computer issue or an audio issue, meaning they're not, their audio isn't merged, or they could have a really bad microphone. So hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully if you tell people to mute themselves and teach people how to call in with their audio, um, that can fix the problem. Okay, this is where the basic 101 tips presentation ends. If you're just a basic Zoom user um, and you don't think you're gonna um, host any meetings, you're just gonna be the participant of some meetings, you can probably end here. If you have any questions, you can email me. My email is here. It's stacy at chesapeakeclimate.org. Um, but if you uh, are a more dedicated activist, if you run your own volunteer groups or volunteer circles, um, for Speakin or for another environmental organization, and you want some more advanced tips, I'm going to go into some more advanced tips. So I'm going to give you a, an abbreviated version of a training that I gave our own Speakin organizers um, just a week ago. Okay, so let's move on to these more advanced tips. If you're hosting a meeting or you just want to really dive deep into how Zoom works so you understand and feel good about using the technology. Okay, great. So here's some advanced tips for hosting a meeting for some organizers. Okay, um, so for an organizer, it might be really important for you to learn how to set up a meeting. So um, let's talk about settings best practices. So first, you would sign into your Zoom account. Um, go to your account, and then once you're in your account, I would say do this in a web browser as opposed to doing it from a mobile device or a tablet, um, go to your settings, and then let's talk about some settings best practices. Okay, so, um, and again, the reason why we wanna talk about settings um, and make sure all of our Zoom meetings are gonna be secure is to fight something that's called Zoom bombing. Um, if you haven't heard of it, I will put some, uh, I'm gonna post this video to YouTube and then I'm gonna, post the links to some articles and some resources where you can learn more about that. I'm going to post that in the comments. Um, so, uh, you know, some bad faith actors have been joining Zoom meetings that they're not supposed to, you know, joining Zoom meetings that they're not invited to, and causing a disturbance and being, um, you know, saying racist or sexist things. So we want to generally avoid people um, who aren't supposed to be in our meetings, who aren't climate activists. So having some settings set up, having your settings set up in a strong way is really going to go far in terms of limiting access to people who you do not want to be in your meeting. Okay, so if you're at your settings portal on the Zoom website, let's talk about the first couple of settings that pop up for you. So It'll ask if you want to require registration to a meeting. I'd say in terms of us as CCAN activists, it's not uh, required. I would say as long as you're not posting a Zoom link publicly, um, you don't need to require uh, your meeting attendees to register ahead of time. But it might be helpful in order to control who is going to be on the call so you know um, everyone who's supposed to call in. So maybe keep that in mind. Um, keep in mind where you're sharing the link, who's going to get that, um, and what settings you're taking in order to require authentication on who's going to be on the call. Okay, so in terms of the setting, it'll ask you, how do you want to generate your meeting ID? That just means the link that's going to be created when you schedule your meeting ahead of time. Go ahead and hit generate automatically. I'm gonna go into why in some of the next slides. So for now, just hit generate automatically. Then again, do you want to require a meeting password? I'd say no, it's not required unless you're hosting a more sensitive meeting with your activists and, or if you're having security issues and you wanna make sure only people you know and trust are gonna be on the call, go ahead and require the meeting password. Um, how do you want to enable audio? This is basically asking you, do you want to allow people to call in with their phones um, or only call in using a computer and therefore a video connection? 
I would say go ahead and hit both. Um, this, would, this allows people who maybe don't have a, a computer with a video or want to use their smartphone or want to just use a call, you know, someone who prefers audio calls to video calls, that'll allow them to call in as well. So that's why you go ahead and hit both to make sure your meeting is accessible as possible to people who might not have the latest technology or electronics. Okay. Then for you as the meeting ho as the meeting host, some meeting options that you want to check, that means enable. You do want to mute your participants upon entry and you do want to enable the waiting room. We're going to go into how to use the waiting room in just a second, but the reason you want to mute participants on entry is so that you can control the meeting um, and make sure you control the noise level of the meeting so people's background noise is not the first thing they hear when they call in. Okay, so a second ago I told you to generate your meeting link automatically instead of using a personal meeting ID. So the reason you want to generate automatically is because the other option, personal meeting ID, is something that is unique to you as a Zoom user. So you don't want to use your personal meeting ID for large meetings with non-speakers. Um, it's okay to use a personal meeting ID for recurring meetings and for meetings with people that you trust. But what that means about using a personal meeting ID is that the link will stay the same each meeting. So if you don't want other people to have access to your ongoing meeting. That's why I told you to generate automatically. Your personal meeting ID is basically one continuous meeting space online reserved for you to use at any time. Uh, and you don't want a random person to crash your personal meeting space. Okay, so let's go into some proper safety settings for hosts. So go ahead and sign in with Zoom and then use this link to get to your settings. Then let's check your setting. So uh, you are gonna want to, I would recommend creating a waiting room if you're hosting a meeting. Um, you're also gonna want to set your screen sharing to host only, unless you know other people on the call are gonna wanna share their screen. You can restrict other features as well as needed. Um, so that would block private chats, turn off file transfers. You can restrict custom backgrounds. All of that will limit interactions between users. I'd say these settings are up to you. I mean, definitely turn off file transfers, but you can keep private chats enabled and you can also keep custom backgrounds enabled um, if that feels good for you and your users. It's all about what safety settings do you wanna set up for your meeting. Okay, lastly, um, you're gonna want to disable allow removed participants to rejoin. Basically what that means is if you, if someone's being really disruptive in a meeting, you can remove them, you as the host can remove them from a meeting um, and then they won't be able to call back in for the remainder of that meeting. Okay, so here's some optional safety tips. Um, Meeting registration via Zoom required, I'd say uh, that's not recommended because we typically ask people to register for CCAN. We, uh, we ask people to register on an Engaging Networks page to, in order to get the link. So that in itself is a security step that we're taking to make sure we know who the link is going out to and that we capture their information in some way. If you don't have a way to capture other people's um, information, then maybe go ahead and enable meeting registration. So what that means is Zoom will give you a registration link um, that you can send via email to other people and then ask them to register for this meeting so they can get the call in information. Okay, the next setting would be password, password required. You do have the option to make sure users submit a password to enter the meeting. That's up to you. That creates an additional security step that people have to take. Um, to be super safe, you could enable it, but I think as long as you're being safe and not sharing your link, that's just a, an additional unnecessary step that you don't need to make people do just to join your meeting. Last setting, it'll ask, do you want only authenticated users to join? Uh, you could, but this 
might limit people who are joining by phone only. And I'll, I'll link to this document here. This is what Zoom had to say about that issue. Um, I'd say that's not super necessary for what you need if you just want to set up a basic meeting with the basic security setting. Okay, so how do you invite other people to your Zoom meeting? Once you create a meeting in the back end of Zoom, um, I strongly recommend you create your meetings using a web browser. Um, that'll just mean you're able to have more control over the security settings each time you create a meeting. So you'll create your meeting, put in your time, your date, um, how long the meeting is going to be, and then you can either add it to your Google Calendar or copy the meeting invitation and that'll be over here. I would recommend hitting that so you can just copy that information and paste it into an email and invite your friends. Okay, so that was that. Let's now talk about uh, the different view layouts of the Zoom windows. So um, you might have seen this before, you might have already you might have already known this, but here's just a quick tip on if you're in a meeting with multiple people, um, you have the option to see everyone who's on the call or just have Zoom highlight whoever is talking at the current moment. So that would be speaker view. Uh, and the way you uh, change these settings is if you're in your Zoom window, if you hover your mouse over the screen, it'll pop up in the top uh, right corner of speaker view. If you're on speaker view, it'll say grid view. Um, keep in mind, Zoom recordings default to record in speaker view. Make sure you know who is on speaker view, and you'll know that based on a little highlight that goes over someone's screen. Um, if you're the host, you also have the option to pin a video as a host. Okay, let's go into waiting room. So waiting room feature allows the host to control when a participant joins a meeting. Um, don't forget that you need to enable that setting in your settings to set up your meeting, sorry, to set up a meeting um, with a waiting room and enable it in your settings. So uh, join before host, no one will be able to join before the host um, for that meeting. Okay, so I'll link to a help document that Zoom gave us on more information about this. Okay, but if you're the host, if you set up a meeting with the waiting room, the waiting room's gonna look like this. Um, if you hit participants, which is a tool at the bottom of your screen for me, because I'm sharing my screen, my tools are at the top, but it'll show up at the bottom in your toolbar, hit manage participants, it'll show who is in the meeting currently and who is in the waiting room. So if it's seven o'clock, time for your meeting to start, if you want to let in everyone who's in the waiting room, go ahead and admit all. Um, I would recommend tag teaming with a friend and having one person sort of be the meeting host to welcome people into the meeting and then make a friend a co-host. And I'll go into how to do that in a few slides. Uh, make someone a co-host and they'll also be able to admit people in from the waiting room. So it's good to have backup from a friend so you're not the only one doing this. Um, you can also turn off the waiting room once the meeting starts, so you don't have to keep admitting people in. So the way you would do that is um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll go to manage participants, and then there should there will be an option um, to turn the waiting room off. Okay, in your settings, you also do have some waiting room options. Okay, you have the option to uh, allow people who um, are co-hosts to uh, bypass the waiting room and jump straight into the same meeting room. So if you're doing like a webinar with panelists, you can make your panelists um, co-hosts and then they can bypass the regular waiting room and join right into the meeting. So you they can call in a few minutes early just so you can prep uh, if you're giving a presentation or something like that. I would recommend though, however, hitting all participants. Um, that would mean that all people, uh, when they try and call in to your call, will be added to the waiting room and you have to admit them manually. 
that just gives you more control over who may join your meeting and prevent people from joining your meeting early before you're ready. Okay, so this is the, what the waiting room looks like for someone who's waiting. It'll just be a screen and they'll say, please wait, the meeting host will let you in soon. You can, you as the host can send messages to people in the waiting room via the chat. So you can say like, hey everyone, thanks for joining. We're gonna let you in in a few minutes. You can also edit what it says here in terms of the waiting room title and text. So the title would be, you know, my name's meeting. But you can also edit it uh, to the name of the webinar or whatever meeting you're hosting. And then you can also change this text. So you could change it to something like, please, thank you for joining. We will let you in promptly at 8 p.m. So that'll just give people a message like, okay, if I called in five minutes early, I know that this waiting room is here until eight o'clock until the meeting is supposed to start. So that's not necessary. These tips are not necessary, but you do have this tool available to you. Okay, so let's talk about breakout rooms. Breakout rooms allow you to split your Zoom meeting in up to 50 separate rooms. So this is good if you want to do breakout questions, like you want to pair people off to do partner question and answer, partner share, um, split people up by county or legislative district, for example. Um, so, you can split the participants into separate sessions automatically or manually, and you can end the session at any time. So something uh, important to note is people who are using a Chrome device are weirdly unable to join breakout rooms, but they'll just stay in the main session room. And so you can have an a alternative session for people in that, in that room. You need to pre, oh, you, sorry. <laughs> Another thing you can do, but not necessary, is you can pre-assign breakout rooms for users, but that would require you to have a Zoom uh, paid account, and you would, they would need to be registered for a meeting via Zoom. So you'd have to require registration. Okay, here's how you create a breakout room. So if you're the host of a meeting, it'll be at the bottom toolbar. Um, Click breakout room. It might be, if you don't see it immediately on your tools at the bottom, hit more. It might be under more. Um, and then select uh, the number of rooms you want to create and how you would like to assign participants to those rooms. So you can automatically split people up. So that would just split them up randomly. I think that's the easiest option. Um, and it's the best if it doesn't matter who other people get paired up with. Um, but you can also do it manually. So you would choose which participants you would like to go out into each room. So you would do that if um, you know all the people on the call, you kind of generally know what city they're from. Maybe you're doing a legislative meeting and you want to have people break out by who their legislator is and have them talk about a strategy, all within the context of the Zoom call. You can do that as well. So you'll hit create breakout rooms. Your rooms will be created, but will not start automatically. Next, okay. So after creating those breakout rooms, click options. And then I recommend you use these settings for your breakout rooms. Move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. Breakout rooms will, if you hit that option, breakout rooms will close automatically after X minutes. So you can add what time that would be. You would put in the time manually. Um, and then if that option is checked, the breakout rooms will automatically end after that time. Um, you can also check a box to get notified when the time is up. So this lets you know as the host um, when the breakout room time is up and you can choose to end those, close those breakout rooms. So you can also set a countdown timer for the people in the breakout rooms. Um, then they'll be able to see on their screen how much time they have left before they're going to be returned to the main room. So here's how you do that. This is what it looks like in a Zoom window. Um, these are all these check boxes that I just talked about. So you can set a countdown timer. Um, yeah, and assign people to rooms that way. 
Okay, how do you manage a breakout room in progress? Um, participants will be asked to join a breakout room. Sometimes participants um, also have the option to decline being joined a breakout room. Maybe someone doesn't want to do that, and that's okay. You as a host will then stay in the main meeting um, unless you join a breakout room manually. If a participant has not joined the session yet, it will be noted um, next to their name. And then just my last tip. So right, if you do all those settings, you can set a timer for your breakout room. Sometimes when the timer is up, the breakout rooms don't break automatically. So that's okay, don't panic, just hit close room. And then I'll put everyone back in the main room with you as the host. Okay, another tool that you could use um, that I think is really cool is the whiteboard feature. So it gives you a virtual whiteboard that you can share with the other participants. And if you enable this setting, they can annotate on, like they can write on. Um, you know, you can use it just like you would a regular whiteboard in a classroom. Um, you can write on it, um, you know, brainstorming. This is, this is, I think, a really cool tool for brainstorming or visioning exercises. You know, you can take notes. You can write on it. Um, you can have other people give input as well. You can save your whiteboard and download it to your computer. So I could see that happening, like working out really well in a volunteer meeting where you guys are brainstorming next steps or talking about an upcoming um, petition or an upcoming hearing. You know, use that to use these tools digitally for your advantage and you can basically recreate, if this is something that you would do in a normal meeting, you know, maybe you have a butcher block paper that you would write on, um, like, you know, poster board. Um, you can also do that with a whiteboard on Zoom. So you can do it and on your screen. Okay, let's just talk about some user meeting controls that you as a host have the ability to control with other participants. So, you can mute participants. Oh yeah, and all of these user meeting controls will be under either manage participants or more. Okay, you can mute participants. You can also request that someone unmute themselves. So if you are the meeting host, but you want someone else to share or speak, you can unmute them. You can turn off someone's video if like someone is has a bad camera angle or is being inappropriate um you know or something like that uh you can stop their video you can request that someone starts their video um so if someone is having a hard time getting their video working you can try and help them out you as the host can try and help them out by helping them turn on their video you can also prevent people from screen sharing um you can rename a participant you can put them on hold which would basically put them back into the waiting room and you would, I would recommend doing that if someone's audio, if like someone's not unmuting themselves and there's like, they're being very disruptive in a meeting. You can choose to play an enter or exit chime. I personally don't love it. So I, I like to turn that off when I'm hosting a meeting. If you have everyone in your meeting that's supposed to be in the meeting, another safety step you can take is to lock the meeting to prevent anyone new from joining. And then, yeah, you can also place people in the waiting room or admit people from the waiting room. Okay, so let's talk about audience participation. So some ways you can interact, if you're a host and you're trying to figure out how do I set up this meeting like a webinar, um, you can share your screen. You can also have other people share their screen, but I would not recommend that if you're looking for more of a webinar as opposed to a community shared meeting. You know, just make sure you set up your safety settings only as much as you need to use. So if you're setting up a meeting and you don't anticipate other people are going to share their screen, go ahead and turn that setting off because if you don't need that function, it just creates more safety issues for you. Um, another way to interact with people on your call is to do a question and answer section. So if you um, have all of your participants muted, what you'll basically tell them uh, is make sure 
in your settings, you enable nonverbal feedback. And then tell people on the call, hey, if you have a question, go ahead and enter and uh, in the chat section, hit raise your hand. It'll say hand raised. And then it'll show you people who are muted, who want to talk, who might have a question. So then you, as the host, click on manage participants. You can see who has their hand raised, and then you can unmute them and then remute them when they're done talking. Okay, right. So let's, I'll, let me tell you the setting on how to enable this nonverbal feedback. So you'll sign into Zoom. Uh, make sure you're signed in as an administrator and you go to edit my account settings. So navigate to the meeting tab and the setting. That tab is called in meeting basic and just verify that the nonverbal feedback is enabled. If the setting is disabled, click on it to toggle it to enable it um, and just click on to verify the change. Okay. So that was nonverbal feedback. Let's talk about another tool, and that would be polling. So you can actually submit a poll. Uh, you can submit multiple polls during your Zoom meeting. So the way you would enable that poll is go to account management, account settings, navigate to the polling option in the meeting tab, and verify that that setting is enabled. If the setting is disabled, just toggle it blue to enable it. Um, then if you want to create a poll, just a note, you need to do that before the meeting starts. So you need to, when you're setting up the meeting, um, have your poll ready to go. So you'll enable the poll option, then you can go ahead and create your poll and add your question and your different polling options. Okay, so another tip that I would recommend, and I talked about this earlier, Add a co-host to help you control the meeting. So this is what I tell my CCAN organizers is make sure you have two people on the call who are helping you, you and one other person, sorry, make up those two people who are on the call as hosts or co-hosts um, to basically control the meeting. Um, one person should be the uh, facilitator, um, basically talking to people during the meeting. Um, and then the second person is more backup, helping uh, mute people, helping people unmute themselves, helping people if they're having an issue with their audio or video. So that second person is just there to help you make sure the meeting goes smoothly. So the way you would add a, someone as a co-host as a co to your meeting, um, if you're in a meeting, wait for your co-host to join, click on the participants or the manage participants button, and then click on the three dots that appear next to their name and you have the option to make them a co-host. Okay, uh, if you're a pro Zoom user, if, you're, if you want to record a webinar to show it to other people later, um, you can record your meeting to your laptop or uh, if you're a pro, an advanced account, basically a paid account user, you can record to your to the cloud, which is basically your Zoom account. Um, so the way you would do that is you can, here's some keyboard shortcuts to pause the recording, um, but if you want to enable local recording, which means record it to your computer, uh, like your downloads folder, just go to settings and recording, toggle it on. If you're hosting a meeting, uh, click record, or sometimes that might be in the more option. Okay, and how to access that recording. If you record it um, to your computer, this is the file path for PC users. This is the file path for Mac users. If you record it to the cloud, go to your account on a web browser and sign in. Uh, sign into your account and then you can hit view recording. Okay, another feature. Um, is if you have people sign in to Zoom before they join a meeting, you can see who actually attended your meeting. So the way you would do that is to sign into your Zoom account, go to account management, and then the reports section, look for usage reports, and then click on that specific meeting. Click on meetings to find the meeting you want, select the meeting, 
and the date range and then generate their report. But just a note, to, to get an attendee list, you need to be the host of a meeting or an account administrator. Okay, so let's have a security discussion. Like I mentioned, we are afraid, not afraid, we are mindful that um, other organizations have had problems with, um, you know, like people who are white supremacists going into other people's Zoom meetings um, and causing a disruption and spreading hate, and we don't want that. So what do you do if someone that you don't want joins your meeting? Um, you have a number of different ways to make them be quiet and to make them leave your meeting. If you are the host, you should know how to uh, run these settings. So first, I would say try and lock them out. Um, you can, If you are the host of a meeting, you can remove someone from a meeting. So click on the participants list. And if you're a host, your toolbar should be at the bottom unless you're sharing your screen. So at the, my toolbar is at the top. So manage participants is up here for me, up here in the center. Click on manage participants. It'll show you a window of everyone who's there. Find the person whose name is the problematic person. And then you can actually right click on the more options, the three dots, and you can remove them from the meeting. You can also click lock meeting to stop further participants from entering the meeting. Next, I would say uh, make people be quiet if someone is causing a disruption. So you as the host, go to the participants list and again, scroll to the all to the bottom and you can actually mute all people, mute all participants. You can also mute people individually, and you can also turn off their video. And then lastly, if for any reason, if, yeah, sorry, if for any reason, the issue that you're encountering is someone is sharing their screen, and that's an issue, um, you can disable screen sharing. If I recommend you do that already, but if for any reason something goes wrong in the meeting and people are still able to screen share, uh, just, uh, hit the up arrow to the right of screen share and then go to advanced settings, options, and then only host can share. And that's it. Those are some basic ways to control other people in the meeting and make them be quiet. Okay, right. So ultimately, you as the host are responsible for the meeting security. So we just went through a ton of security settings. Um, different settings, options that you have available to you. Um, so I would say err on the side of caution for large meetings um, and for meetings with participants that might be unknown to you. If you're confused about a certain setting, just ask us, ask the CCAN team, and I'm going to give you my email in just a second. Um, last things I would mention about Zoom is you are able to integrate Zoom with your other apps. So if you're a Google Calendar user, if you use Google Drive, if you use Gmail, you can integrate Zoom with all of these different apps so you can get calendar reminders uh, when a Zoom meeting that you're supposed to be in is about to start. You can um, start an instant meeting from Gmail. You can uh, allow users to join from a mobile device from a Google Drive account. All of these are tools that are available to you. So I would, if you're interested in them, I'd say go to your Google Calendar, go to Google Drive, go to Gmail, and search for a way to integrate Zoom with your preferred uh, product of choice. Okay, lastly, we're just going to go into some cool tips and features, just so you know. Um, if you want to stream to Facebook Live, if you want to stream a Zoom meeting to Facebook Live, you have the option to do that. Just make sure that is enabled in your settings before the meeting starts. You can also have people uh, add a Zoom virtual background, which will basically turn your background into a green screen, and people are able to add fun backgrounds that way. That's an option that you have available to you. You can also mute or unmute with the space bar. That's like a really helpful tool. If you just want a quick mute, unmute, it's the space bar. Here are some other keyboard shortcuts for PC and Mac. So right, mute, you can also uh, hit Command-Control-M. 
you can invite other people really easily with your keyboard. You can also share your screen really easily with some keyboard shortcuts. And then lastly, um, there's also an option for to let Zoom uh, touch up your appearance. Um, you can click the up arrow uh, next to start video, click on your video settings, and then ask Zoom to touch up your appearance. I don't really know what Zoom does, but I guess they make you look good. Okay, that's the end of our presentation. If you have any questions about Zoom or anything else tech tools related, I'm happy to talk to you. Please email me. My email is Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y, at chesapeakeclimate.org. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something today. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, thanks so much. Bye-bye.